Hey, whales. Welcome back to another topic we will discuss today. Ever get that creepy feeling you're being watched online? Like you mentioned you need new socks, and suddenly every website you visit is a sock appalooza? That's not a coincidence, my friend. That's your digital footprint in action. And today we're going on a journey to uncover this unseen online you the digital ghost that follows you everywhere. Every click, every like, every search for can I teach my cat to play the piano? It all contributes to your digital identity. It's like a trail of breadcrumbs you leave behind, except instead of leading back to your house, it leads to a highly detailed, slightly embarrassing profile of you that advertisers and data brokers are drooling over. Think of it this way, your online self is like your real-world self, but with a much better memory. It remembers that one time you bought a Nicolas Cage pillowcase as a joke. It remembers you spent three hours watching cat videos at 2 a.m. It remembers everything. And it's not afraid to use that information to sell you more Nicolas Cage pillowcases. But it's not just about targeted ads. Your digital footprint has real-world consequences. It can affect your job prospects, your insurance rates, and even your ability to get a loan. In a world where 84% of consumers base purchasing decisions on a company's online reputation, you can bet companies are doing the same for you. So how does this happen? Well, it's a combination of what you actively share and what's passively collected. The active stuff is obvious. Your social media posts, your blog comments, your scathing one-star review of that restaurant that served you a lukewarm burrito. You know, the important stuff. But the passive stuff is where it gets really interesting. Every time you visit a website, it's like a little party and you're the guest of honor. And by guest of honor, I mean the main course. Websites use cookies, pixels, and a sneaky little thing called digital fingerprinting to track your every move. The average website has 32 tracking scripts. That's more trackers than a professional hunting party. Digital fingerprinting is like a high-tech detective. It looks at your device's unique characteristics, your operating system, your browser, your installed fonts, even the way your device renders graphics to create a unique profile of you. It's so accurate, it can identify you even if you're using a VPN or incognito mode. It's like a digital DNA test, but instead of telling you you're 12% Viking, it tells advertisers you're 100% likely to buy that ridiculous cat piano course. This whole system has a name, surveillance capitalism. It's a business model that's all about turning your personal experiences into profit. Companies like Google and Facebook aren't just providing free services. They're in the business of collecting your data, packaging it up and selling it to the highest bidder. You're not the customer, you're the product. And it's a booming business. By 2025, the global data sphere is expected to reach 175 zettabytes. That's 175 with 21 zeros after it. If each gigabyte was a brick, you could build the Great Wall of China 258 times. And most of those bricks are made of your personal data. Here's where it gets really wild. Your digital fingerprint is so unique that it can identify you across different devices and browsers. It's like having a digital signature that you can't change. Even if you clear all your cookies, use a different browser, and connect through a VPN, websites can still recognize you based on how your device behaves. It's tracking that would make a bloodhound jealous. The data collection goes deeper than you might think. Websites track your mouse movements, how long you pause before clicking, your typing patterns, and even how you scroll through pages. Some sites use something called canvas fingerprinting. They make your device draw an invisible image and use the tiny differences in how it renders to identify you. It's like asking everyone to draw the same picture and using the subtle differences in their handwriting to tell them apart. And let's talk about those free services we all love. When Google offers you free email, free maps, and free search, they're not doing it out of the goodness of their hearts. They're doing it because your data is worth more than gold. In fact, the average person's data is worth about $240 per year to these companies. So that free Gmail account? You're actually paying for it with your privacy. The scary part is how this data gets combined. Data brokers, companies you've probably never heard of, buy and sell information about you from hundreds of sources. They know your shopping habits, your health concerns, your political views, and probably your favorite pizza toppings. 
They create profiles so detailed they could probably predict what you'll have for breakfast next Tuesday. But here's the thing that really gets me. We're all complicit in this. We click accept all cookies without reading what we're agreeing to. We sign up for loyalty programs that track our every purchase. We use social media platforms that monitor our relationships and interests. It's like we're voluntarily building our own surveillance state, one click at a time. Okay, so it all sounds a bit dystopian. But don't despair. You're not completely powerless. There are ways to clean up your digital footprint and take back some control. First, the basics. Use a privacy-focused browser like Firefox or Brave. Install an ad blocker like uBlock Origin. And for the love of all that is holy, clear your cookies regularly. It's like digital hygiene. You wouldn't go a month without showering, would you? Don't let your browser go a month without a good cookie cleanse. Second, be mindful of what you share. Before you post that picture of your weirdly shaped potato, ask yourself, do I want this to be part of my permanent digital record? The answer is probably no dot. Remember comma. 63% of deleted online content is still retrievable. The internet never truly forgets. Third, read those privacy policies. I know, I know, they're longer than a Tolstoy novel and about as exciting as watching paint dry. But they tell you exactly what companies are doing with your data. If you don't like what you read, don't use the service. And finally, support companies and regulations that prioritize privacy. The GDPR in Europe and the CCPA in California are steps in the right direction, but we need more. We need to demand a digital world where we're the users, not the used. Your digital identity is an extension of you. It's a powerful tool that can be used for good or for ill. By understanding how it's created and how it's used, you can start to shape it into something that truly represents you, not just the you that advertisers want to see. The future of privacy isn't just about technology, it's about awareness. The more we understand how our digital selves are being constructed and commodified, the better we can protect ourselves. It's time to take back control of our online identities and make sure that when we leave digital footprints, they're the ones we actually want to leave behind. So what do you think? Are you ready to take control of your digital self? Let me know in the comments below what surprised you most about digital tracking. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more deep dives into our crazy digital world. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some Nicolas Cage pillowcases to delete from my browser history.